imagine you're going into the client, I've got the idea for you, we're going to do this big major television launch for the, the Volkswagen Beetle, and uh, the person selling it is dead. I'm actually Snavely being of sound mind and body to hereby bequeath the following. To my wife Rose, who spent money like there was no tomorrow, I leave $100 and a calendar. To my sons, Rodney and Victor, who spent every dime I ever gave them on fancy cars and fast women, I leave $50 in dimes. Uh, and in fact, it's his funeral. What? It's his funeral. I, I start raving a dead man at his funeral is going to sell our car. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And of course it is. And it is the most beautiful piece of writing. To my business partner, Jules, whose only motto was spend, spend, spend. I leave nothing, nothing, nothing. It was absolutely amazing. I mean, it really was. It was like, you know, when Elvis Presley got up and sang don't step on my blue suede shoes. It had that kind of effect. I mean, you just didn't see advertising like that. We forget, in a sense, what it was like. We forget what a breakthrough it was. And today, you know, to look at a piece of advertising like the funeral and go, I mean, most car clients today would not buy that idea. But never mind somebody in 1966, I think it was. I can't remember the exact date, but about that. Just genius. Finally, to my nephew Harold, who oft times said, a penny saved is a penny earned. I'll tell you what I think Birnbach um, identified is that one, he realised advertising had to be entertainment. Um, he believed fundamentally in the power of the product to drive that entertainment. And the third thing is he believed you should base everything on the truth. And who also oft times said, gee, Uncle Max, it sure pays to own a Volkswagen. I leave my entire fortune of $100 billion. If you were to make it again, you'd change virtually nothing. You'd change nothing. Well, my second choice is Heineken, uh, and it's called Water in Mallorca. The water in Mallorca doesn't taste like what it ought no, to. No, no. The water in Mallorca don't taste like what it ought to. Adapting this wonderful story of Pygmalion. And they couldn't actually do Pygmalion, so they, they had to sort of do, oh, I know, we'll do it as the water in Majorca. The water in Majorca doesn't taste quite how it should. Majorca. 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 What it's done is it's inverted society. What it said is, in society now, it isn't talking in a smart accent that works, it's talking in a working class accent that works. So it isn't water in Mallorca, it's water in Majorca. No, and they're trying to, they've inverted it. And every word in that is perfect. Here, Del, any, any danger, danger of some refreshment? refreshment danger of some refreshment, that's an interesting, you know, use of words, danger of refreshment, you know that. Or get your laughing yeah. gear around this. I mean, you'll study that language and go, what was going on here? You know, it's Shakespearean in its construction. Golly. The water in Majorca. What's that? Don't taste like what it ought are. <laughs> Gosh. The water in Majorca don't taste like what it ought are. So if I was going to study British society in the latter half of the 20th century, I could read volumes of books. I could read volumes of books about it. No, that's fantastic. Or I could watch Water in Majorca. She's cracking. She's only corrected. You're absolutely wrong. Heineken refreshes the parts other beers cannot reach. It's perfect, and it's all done in 60 seconds. My final choice is, is um, uh, Marmite. Um, and it's actually the latest one they've done. I think it's the latest one, done, the DNA test. Yes. They're here. This should be interesting. Please find and close the results of your family's recent Marmite gene tests. These show whether you were born a lover or a hater. And the thing I love about um, the DNA one is to take this idea that actually loving or hating is in your DNA. What does it say? You're a hater. Dad. Yeah. I am. Um, 
I need to tell you something. I, uh, I'm a Marmite lover. And there's this wonderful thing today where everybody's having their, you know, as you now have your DNA measured and we're all trying to find out, you know, who we are. And taking that sort of phenomena that's going on in society and saying, oh, we've done it we've, with Marmite and we're finding out whether we're lovers or haters. And the acting, I think, is absolutely superb. I mean, it is just brilliant. I thought you said I hated it and this says I love it. What type of mother does something like that? But baby, I... Oh my goodness, I am so stupid. I prefer jam. And even though we're doing 60 second commercials or 30 or whatever it is you're doing, you have to believe in the characters. And when you look at that uh, Marmite piece, you absolutely believe them. Have you ever done it here? In this house? Yes, I only did it to make you happy. <laughs> Do I look happy? On this table? Yes. Oh, baby, please don't! I don't hate Marmite, I hate you! Learn, I can learn, look. <laughs> Wonderful example of, you know, being very daring, telling the truth, um, elevating uh, this very mundane spread, you know, why, would, why should it be that as opposed to something else, into this, you know, sort of national phenomena. There's something I always do, and I, I say you can reduce, you know, all lessons of in, in the advertising industry, you can just reduce communications down to a triangle. At the very top is, is it memorable? Did I stop you? Uh, and if I haven't done that, then everything else goes out the window, because, you know, that's it. Then at one point is, is it motivating? In other words, have I said something? And then at the other end is, is it truthful? Is it telling a truth? Because I'm trying to build a long-term relationship with you. So those three things, and I, I think I look at those and they, they, they match that triangle brilliantly. Well, I think in many ways they're, they're, they're examples of um, being daring, and I think you've got to be daring. I think they're sort of groundbreaking too. They're a, they're a, they're a kind of short lecture in how to do great work, and, and I love them. Storytelling is at the very, very foundation of society. It's what holds us together. And the best place to tell a, tell a story is on film. Well, of course, you can tell a story in a book, but film is the most wonderful place to tell a story, and television is a fantastic medium for doing so.